Hello, Stefan Harvin here, Iron DPC. Today we're talking about the diet of the Eskimo. Very cool stuff. These people, uh, they've had a bit of a decline over the past hundred years. So we're going to look back uh, an early research paper by uh, Sinclair. He studied the Eskimo populations back in 1953. Um, there was an interest in this. This was during the time when both Ansel Keys and Sinclair, they were doing research on these populations, trying to figure out what was causing heart disease. There was an interest in omega-3s, essentially, because Eskimos had no heart disease, and it was thought it was because all the fish they ate. Now, we're going to see here that maybe it wasn't just fish. These people lived a very interesting life. Um, Eskimo is a word that means he eats raw meat. The Cree called the Eskimos this. They, their word for it was uh, uskipu, and uh, the Cree thought this was disgusting, eating raw meat. Uh, polar bear was eaten in its entirety. They ate mosque, uh, oxen. They ate salmon, but it was more seasonally when they could catch it, although they did store it and uh, dry it so they could eat it during the winter. They were mostly a carnivorous population. And during the few months of the year when they could collect berries, they did so. Um, another delicacy that they ate was these fermented foods, and they would ferment it like we would think it would cause you know, illness, it would cause death to eat something like this. What would they do is they would stuff dead birds into the carcass of a dead seal, seal and ferment it under a rock for about three months and they would eat this in winter. Seal and whale was a huge part of their daily caloric intake. So here's a bit of an estimate of the macronutrients for the Eskimo. Now mind you, they weren't ketogenic. They did eat a lot of protein. Uh, something that we would consider maybe a bodybuilder type of diet to try to get, you know, 280 grams of protein in per day. This is essentially unheard of in a regular population. Some Eskimo, Eskimo men were known to be able to eat 20 pounds of protein in a day. And these researchers back in the 1950s and 30s, they tested it. They challenged them to see how much they could eat. And uh, there were some, uh, some records of 25 to 30 pounds of meat in a day. So what happens when you eat so much protein, you'll get an elevated BUN, blood urea and nitrogen. In a healthy population, this isn't really a concern. Now here was the, the interesting part that was lost to history. So Ansel Keys, he was doing studies over in Europe, looking at Mediterranean populations, and he was extrapolating data from uh, wealthy businessmen who maybe ate uh, more saturated fat and got more heart disease and then he looked at a poorer population in Sardinia who ate a more fish-based diet and made the association that um, eating low fat was healthier. But however, here in the Arctic, we had a couple researchers that were looking at the blood cholesterol of these Eskimos who were eating a decent amount of fat. They found their cholesterol levels were pretty normal. Um, and they found that uh, it definitely disproved the alleged incidence of arteriosclerosis in Eskimos, at least in the Eastern Arctic. Um, and this was the same uh, for about all diseases. They didn't have these diseases, it was just tuberculosis, they didn't have diabetes, appendicitis, cancer, uh, dental cavities. I mean, these people, they were essentially free of disease, except when they came in contact with the Western influence. Once they got in contact with Western influence, you know, this was still, you know, we, they already saw this in the you know, 1930s that uh, these Eskimos were trading with Westerners and uh, they were starting to become diseased. And this was done strategically to eliminate much of the indigenous population in the U.S. They, you know, Westerners were notorious for almost causing the extinction of the bison, the buffalo. Thankfully, they've made a resurgence and we can now eat buffalo fantastic animal has a great amount of iron in it uh, but essentially the way you weaken a population is you take away their red meats and you give them alcohol and you give them processed foods and this is being done today very interesting here the ophthalmologist here um, he looked in the eyes of these uh, Eskimos who were trading with the Westerners and getting things like white breads sugars I mean, these Eskimos, they're just like us. You, you give them sugary stuff and 
that's all your calories. You're gonna get 85% of your calories are gonna be from white flour and sugar. And they started getting the diseases that we see today. And interesting, this ophthalmologist, he looked in the eyes and he saw that there was disease in the eyes. And his solution was fix the diet. This is incredible. Why don't we do this today to regular populations? Why does it just have to be Eskimos or indigenous populations? Right? We can extrapolate this to white people, black people, Hispanic people living in modern society, urban societies. Right? It doesn't need to be, it's not, this, these diseases are not unique to indigenous populations that are then fed a Western diet. This is, this is just all humans here. Okay? The Eskimos used to subsist off a carnivorous diet, eating meat raw. They ate a lot of raw meat, which is uh, a bit unpalatable to many people. But you're going to get a lot more nutrients if you don't cook it. They also lightly cooked it as well. Maybe they cooked it in a bit of seawater, and they would eat the marrow, the heads, the skin, the blood, the stomach contents. They were <laughs> kind of infamous for, for fermenting uh, other foods in the stomach contents of animals, the dead animals, and letting that ferment. So very interesting process, uh, getting back probiotics essentially into the diet and live enzymes, which you know are life-giving. <clears throat> Uh, once they started encountering the white people and the white people traded with them, they started getting tuberculosis. How interesting. Now, do you think these Eskimos, they caught tuberculosis? Right? Were they not wearing N95 masks? Was this the reason why they caught tuberculosis? No, tuberculosis is endemic. All right? We've evolved with tuberculosis over millennia. It was our evolutionary friend. It gave us NAD in times of meat starvation. My theory is that they, these Eskimos, they had tuberculosis living in them. And when they were, so it lives in a linked infection. And when you have a shitty diet, the tuberculosis activates and then they start dying of it. And they were starting to die pretty early of it. I think back, this was 1950s, you know, their life expectancy was 25 years, 27. They, I don't think they had anti-tuberculosis drugs back then. So this is a more recent invention. And I think their life extensity is a bit better now. But it, very positively, I was reading a little bit about the current Eskimos and is encouraged that they do still hunt seal and eat raw meats. Uh, so this is uh, very reassuring to see because I know a lot of native populations suffer with severe metabolic diseases. Like we can't even fathom how bad their metabolic disease is because you know they're mostly on re reservations. You know, I, I looked at actually PA jobs to help these people. And, you know, they were paying decent amount, but I would have to live out in isolated Alaska where you could not even reach the destination without a three-hour flight on this little dingy little plane. And you'd be stationed there for months out of the year with no ability to get back to civilization because it is so isolated. Uh, but they do need PAs out there because these people have very bad metabolic disease. Uh, more meat equals less tuberculosis. We have seen this over millennia, uh, or at least hundreds of years, over, ever since we've been able to document this sort of thing, but also older. I've seen some research uh, thousands of years ago where there were tuberculosis epidemics or were disease epidemics, and this was during times of meat starvation, right, or low meat diets. And we saw tuberculosis increase in the Industrial Revolution when there was more processed grain in the diet, uh, people obviously were living in close proximity to whenever that was thought the reason behind the, the thought process behind why tuberculosis was spreading but it was likely also a, a low nutrient status low vitamin d status very interesting the eskimos they are able to obtain a lot of the vitamin d from the fat that they eat the seals uh, fat um, the meat has vitamin d in it um, meat and vitamin B3 intake was high during the hunter-gatherer times and intake fell and variances increased during the Neolithic agricultural revolution. Here's a depiction of that. <clears throat> Eating less meat has influenced disease over history. We can see a lot of overlap between aging and pellagra, which is NAD deficiency. So what can we learn from the Eskimo population? Well, they ate a high meat diet, high red meat diet. They ate seal, they ate whale. Uh, they ate some birds on occasion, but uh, it was mostly seal and whale 
for a lot of the year. They would hunt the, mo- the musk ox until it was almost extinct. Um, they would catch salmon. Potentially, they did have high omega-3s in the diet because if you are eating animals that eat fish, right, if you're eating seal, the omega-3 content of that meat is going to be very high. Now, we can get high omega-3s if we are consuming um, pasture-raised grass-fed cows, if we're eating high-quality fish. Uh, Basically, the quality of the food will indicate how much omega-3 is in there. So I think there is some very good um, literature out there to support that omega-3s can be very protective against cardiovascular disease. The other component of this that we have to understand is the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. We're gonna be talking about that in another lecture. But omega-6s, as we know, they're everywhere. They're highly processed. They're industrialized seed oils. And essentially, if you could lower your omega-6 ratio, if you reduce that, you could potentially, by proxy, increase your omega-3 without necessarily having to supplement with it. But for patients with deficiencies, um, supplementing with pharmaceutical grade omega-3s, which we're gonna talk about in a later episode, can be helpful. But for this purpose here, we're talking about essentially eating a more ancestrally appropriate diet. Um, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to be fermenting (coughs) dead birds in the seal carcass. I mean, that's kind of disgusting, but that was their culture. Um, What can we take from this? I mean, eating red meats doesn't cause disease. It is protective against diseases, all diseases, whether metabolic disease or infectious disease. Um, Eating fats doesn't cause heart disease. Eating high protein, you know, isn't bad for you. And I know there's a lot of misconceptions about eating a high protein diet. Uh, Eating fats isn't bad for you. I mean, the, obviously these people had a high caloric expenditure because they were in a very cold climate and being cold burns a lot of calories. Even breathing in cold air burns a lot of calories. So they did have to have a high caloric intake, these people, to even survive out there. But the way they did this was through pretty much a carnivorous diet. I mean, these people were carnivores all throughout the year. They ate berries maybe a, a one month of the year. I don't know. I can't imagine the furthest north I've lived was Berlin, Germany. There is no berries in the winter in Berlin, Germany. If you're living in an Arctic like that, there are no plants there. It's only meats. So that's all I have to say about the Eskimos. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. I'll see you next time.